Hello, and thank you for taking the time to review this tutorial. I am Lisa Johnson, your narrator and co-creator of this tutorial. Iris and I are very happy to offer this tutorial to provide insights about basic skills and behaviors that will serve you well in an academic writing environment. To be sure, however, the skills that support strong academic writing are also skills that transfer to other writing contexts, such as in businesses, or writing you may do in your personal life as well. Note that you have the option to reduce the volume on your device and instead read the closed captioning if you prefer. This tutorial is for a variety of audiences. If you are a middle, high school, or undergraduate learner, this overview will help you to refine your academic skills. Like gears and a mechanized device, your skills are starting to synchronize through use, and with practice, you will be a strong academic writer. If you're a graduate learner or someone who has already achieved a terminal degree, this overview will help you continue to polish your existing skills that have been developed over time within the vast network of opportunities you've had for writing, revising, and receiving feedback on your work. For all audiences, this overview serves as a basic introduction to the fundamental components of academic writing in a brain game based format. There are several guiding principles for academic writing. First, academic writing is an iterative process. Second, academic writing has established protocols. And finally, the academic writing is generally a unique style of communication. Notice the colored shapes on the screen. Each area of academic writing presented in this tutorial is associated with a shape. As a brain game, try to focus on the shape associated with each area throughout the overview as you listen intently to the narration. At the end of the tutorial, you can examine your recall of these areas. First, to be a strong and academic writing, you'll need to develop some habits. It's essential to begin your work early. You will always need time to write well, which involves thinking, strategizing, writing, reviewing, and revising, regardless of the length or format of what you write. Therefore, your writing benefits from planning to write and revisions of multiple drafts of your work. It's also essential to plan to write and revise multiple drafts. Revision ensures that your positions, assertions, and all components of your writing are clearer and the language is more effective while the organization of your writing strengthens. It's also essential as a habit to get as many readers as possible. Always reach out to your personal and professional learning communities, including friends, program or class peers, family and coworkers. Ask them to read and give feedback about your work. To help guide the feedback you receive, share with your community any challenges you faced writing the work and areas you would like specific feedback on, ideally related to any rubrics or expectations for the assessment of your work. Another essential habit is to save proofreading until the very end of the revision process. Though many of us today on word processors have a tendency to edit as we write, there is some argument to be made that correcting sentences you may eliminate when you revise is wasteful of both time and mental energy. It's better advised that you focus on clarity initially and on word choices, spelling, grammar, and punctuation on a second and later iteration of the work. And finally, an essential habit to develop is to never rely on software to do what your brain can do better. Remember that computer software is limited in its ability to ensure accuracy of grammar, spelling, as well as references in text and in a list. Always rely on your skills in these areas and any manuals for final decisions about sentence structure, spelling, word choice, and referencing, such as the APA manual for APA style and Citation or Diana Hacker's Writer's Reference, which are both excellent resources for academic writing. Next, to be a strong academic writer, you'll need to know your audience. Understanding audience is key to any successful communication, inside or outside of academia. At a university, your audience for your academic writing will vary. Sometimes it will be your learner colleagues. Other times it will be your course facilitators or committees. Each kind of audience demands something different from you. It may help you understand how writers approach writing for various audiences by being attentive to the materials that you are asked to read for your courses. For example, have you ever noticed the difference in language and tone between the material in a text 
textbook, which is material designed for novices, and material in a peer-reviewed journal, which is material designed for experts? Start your writing by identifying your audience for every item of academic writing you do, and write to speak to that audience. And always when writing for an academic's audience, you'll need to have a point. There are times when free writing is an effective practice to spark creativity, but knowing the point of writing is essential for academic writing. In fact, we can say that the most important aspect of all academic writing is that it makes an argument. But know that in an academic context, an argument does not mean shouting or even disagreement. It means making a persuasive case built on and supported by evidence, which may be in the form of original data or the data and findings of thoughts of others on a topic. There are times when you will make an argument implicitly, such as when writing to demonstrate that you have mastered new content, and explicit arguments are made as well, such as when the item you're writing is to address a specific question or solve a specific problem. In the implicit example, your point for writing is to persuade your reader that you know the material. In the explicit example, your primary point for writing is to persuade your reader that your position is accurate, defensible, and contributes to new knowledge in your field. While you may be very disorganized, your reading and writing does not need to be. Organized academic writing is very characteristic of good academic writing. One of the best ways to convince an audience of your position is to guide the reader through your argument in an orderly way. While the best organization for any writing has to be determined by the writing's content, much organized academic writing shares several common features, including that the introduction to the writing is clear and focused and moves quickly to the main point. The introduction includes a roadmap, so to speak, of the writing, telling the reader what to expect in the writing and where to expect it. The body of the writing follows that roadmap. And the paragraphs in the body of the writing follow the basic principles of paragraphing. Each paragraph focuses on one main idea, each paragraph has a topic sentence expressing the main idea, and each paragraph is linked to the paragraphs adjacent to it by effective transitions. The paragraphs in the body of the writing are also grouped according to an organized principle. And the conclusion of the writing summarizes the main points in the argument. And as applicable, the conclusion of the writing might also pose new questions for further investigation or research. And it's crucial that you maintain academic integrity and honesty by giving others credit for their ideas. To maintain academic integrity and honesty, you can follow some simple rules. Start by avoiding plagiarism. Plagiarism is representing another person's ideas as your own. Plagiarism ranges from the willful to the accidental. In all cases, however, it's unacceptable. Willful plagiarism includes but is not limited to using another person's words, phrases, or sentences without proper citation. Using another person's organization of ideas or methodology without proper citation. And summarizing another person's work without proper citation. Accidental plagiarism includes but is not limited to forgetting to use citations, using the wrong citation, or citing the wrong material, or using incomplete citations. There are actually many forms of plagiarism that are not egregious, and they all stem from a lack of knowledge about citation. However, in today's era of awareness about plagiarism, there's no excuse for not citing or attempting to accurately cite and not knowing the penalties of plagiarism in your programs and university policies are written to remind you of the expectations for honoring the code of originality in academic work. Additionally, avoid taking credit for work you did not do. It is inappropriate to turn in work that you haven't completed if you claim it as your own. If you write most of your writing but not all of it, you're committing a form of academic fraud. That is, never allow another to complete your coursework for you, in whole or in part. If someone else completes a part of your coursework, you must give them credit. Note that in many cases this will not be acceptable unless you are completing a group project. It will be expected then that your work will be collaborative, but otherwise it's generally expected that all work is completed on your own. 
In closing, the issue of academic integrity can be complicated when it comes to hiring or using editors for coursework. Somebody who proofreads a writing for grammar and spelling does not necessarily need to be given credit because they are not contributing to your ideas directly. Sometimes, however, editors will completely rewrite sentences and paragraphs. So try to avoid falling into this gray area because it can quickly turn into academic dishonesty. Remember the basic principles. Your ideas must be your own. When they're somebody else's, you must properly cite that person or organization. And strong academic writing is revised repeatedly. This was emphasized earlier as one of the good habits. Remember, no matter how good a writer you are, it's unlikely that you will produce an organized, persuasive argument the first time you sit down and work on a writing project or even a course posting. The strongest academic writing is revised writing. And revision does not simply mean fixing errors. Revision means literally to see again. When you revise your writing, try to look at them as though you were reading from someone else's writing. Look for ways that you can improve your argument and your organization, your paragraphs, and so on. And if you revise this way, your final draft will likely look substantially different from your first draft. You will likely have moved paragraphs around, reworked your introduction, and most likely cut out a lot of material that you don't need. It's a lot of work, but your writing will be much improved by the process of revision. And finally, remember to make your writing readable. Even the best researched writing or the writing with impeccable organization can fail to persuade the reader if the writing is not readable. In part, readability refers to the nuts and bolts of language we use, word choice, spelling, grammar, punctuation, and so on. A writing is that's full of spelling and grammar errors is likely to frustrate the reader, and frustrated reader is unlikely to be persuaded by what you have to say. It's imperative that your academic writing be polished, edited, and proofread. After you have revised your writing to improve the argument and organization, that's when it's time for the grammar check. Do not waste your time by checking your grammar before you have revised. You might end up only correcting sentences that you end up cutting anyway. Another component of readability is clear and concise language. On this final point, it's important that your academic writing be easy to understand. Choose your words carefully and omit unnecessary words or phrases. Stay focused on the topic you're discussing. However, this does not confuse precise language with simple ideas. Sometimes it takes a long sentence or a big word to convey a complicated idea. Long sentences can still be clear and concise, though, as long as every word in the sentence is necessary to make your point. You will most likely find that if you leave yourself time to revise, you will be able to refine your sentences until even the most complicated ones use clear and concise language. So here's the tutorial brain game. Recalling the shapes associated with each area, looking at them now on the screen, how many areas of academic writing from this tutorial can you recall? You might pause the video right now for this part of the activity, then rewind the video to review as desired, or proceed to review the next slide, a review slide. So let's review. The academic writing components include developing habits, knowing your audience, having a point, demonstrating integrity, revising, and making writing readable, and always be organized. We hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Please feel free to reach out to either Iris or I for comments, questions, or follow-ups. We hope this has given you some insight into some of the basics for good, effective, strong, and academic writing that you can be proud of.